don't store up treasure on earth, store up treasure yes. in heaven. There's there's real wealth yeah. that we can build yeah. in the age to come. And it has to do with our worship, our words, and our works. And so the urgency that I want to that we want to build and disciple into people um, at Maps Global is to live in a way for the next 50 years and 20 years or 70 years in a way that you won't regret. Yeah. And that's even an I that's even a new concept to people that there could be regret actually experienced at the judgment seat. Thank you for watching the Maps Global podcast where we discuss leadership and culture within the convergence of worship, prayer, and missions in your neighborhood and in the nations. Well, welcome to the Maps Global Podcast. Yeah, let's go. Yay, it's We're another back. episode. We're so excited to be with you guys. As always, it is Yogo Mimi and Ari Martinez, who is no longer a myth, <laughs> <laughs> but still a legend. <laughs> okay. Here to serve. <laughs> I'm here to serve you and be helpful. Hey, you know what it is. You know what it is. We serve at the pleasure of the king himself. That's right. So all hail. All hail all the hail. king. Um, bow the knee. Okay, so welcome everyone. We are back with another episode, and today we are going to be talking about our last why. So over the last few episodes we have been talking about our three whys at maps global we have spoken about our first why which is jesus is worthy and we've spoken about how we need to look at that what is he worth to you what is he worth to me we've spoken about our second why which is the gospel is powerful it was a great episode it was a fantastic episode um and then today we're talking about our third one which is the time is urgent and we're really right. we're really excited about this one all right what are your thoughts my thoughts are i'm excited my thoughts are i think this um will be helpful yeah to people my thoughts are that um that we need to redeem the word urgent yeah urgency um and risk if we could recover here's a big statement you're right yes yes <laughs> <laughs> to recover the apostolic urgency oh, no but it, for real to recur yeah. to recover an apostolic urgency and not an american urgency wow you're gonna have to unpack that i know i'm ready yeah. to, i'm ready <laughs> to, to drop it in. i got we got notes we got my yeah. bible it's going to be good. It's going to be great. So um, let us actually jump right in. So we have, again, three whys, right? And our third one is the time is urgent. Yep. Again, our whys are what anchor us and our whys are the reasons we do what we do and right. how we do it. That's right. So one they of- They inform. They inform our- What's in our house. Yes. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say missiology. Yeah. Um, they inform our missiology and- a lot of other things, I yeah. guess, right? Okay, great. Yeah, and a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff that's important. So, um, all right, we're going to go right in. And you're going to, can you help us? Can you define for us what we mean or don't mean even yeah. when we say that the time is urgent? Well, the two, the two operative words in this statement yes. is time. Yes. What is time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, get very philosophical. Get ready. <laughs> get ready. Exist? I hope that you're sitting down. Is time a ready social construct? <laughs> um, time. Yeah. And what we do with that. Yes. And um, there's a great podcast. We actually did maybe three or four years ago, Luke wow. and I did a podcast called The Beautiful Limit of Time. Wow. The fact that we're confined to time makes us not God. Yes. It's the one limit that God put on in the entire human race yes. is time. Anyway, so I encourage you to go and listen. I don't know what the episode thing is, but uh, maybe we can find that. So operative words, time and then urgent. We're going to spend a lot of time on the urgent one, but yeah. we're going to get to some somewhere in here how the apostles, particularly Paul, how we relate to our time yeah. is the urgent matter. And so... Um, I think the best place to start, especially because um, in certain, well, actually, I'll go m big circles and then shrink them down, concentric circles to where we are here. Awesome. Can we do that? Yep. So there's a a bad 
there is a un an unhealthy um and unbiblical urgency in American culture yeah uh, in Western culture um it's not so much in Eastern culture because it's familial yeah and it's relational but in Western culture there's there's a a, a thing that's been sewed in um in which there's an urgency to do more produce more to take my time and and use the use it to its maximum capacity okay. to to get more things or to produce more stuff yeah. or to make the most impact and things like that um and so what that what that urgency that unhealthy unbiblical urgency produces is kind of this frenzied anxious busyness i don't have enough hours in the day to get everything done yeah 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 um which actually is an unbiblical idea yes um but anyways um god's given you he's provided all the time you need to do what he's asked you to do wow and so um so we got to go to war and that's kind of an intense statement but we got to really work against an urgency that is cultural yes in america um you know i don't i don't you know, I just, it's, it's fast paced. It's on to the next thing. It's zipping around from here to there. Um, I call it frenzied busyness. Now coming a little closer to where we sit, yeah. there's also been, in my opinion, in parts of the church world and the, and kind of the last 20 years of the church world and even the, the missions movement and the prayer movement, this, this, uh, weaponized urgency. Yeah. Um, to kind of whip people up in with a an urgency that's not um it's not joyful, peaceful, yeah, heart buy in to something. It's a a guilt ridden, shame driven, I need to do more to accomplish this vision. Yeah, that's work driven. Works driven. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's 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 um yeah. Production oriented, yeah. task oriented urgency. I think where where it got gnarly, if I had to just kind of do a survey of like good, bad, and the ugly, where where that idea, which is not great in church culture because again, it's unbiblical, but this kind of like, we gotta do more, bigger, better, yeah. faster. We gotta do it bigger than the last time and and uh get more more people in and more, you know, all these things. And it the people under that, we call it in you know the race car the pace yes. car with the with the slamming the gas down um that doesn't produce healthy lifestyles right. especially in the people that uh that are in the top leadership and so um and so there's been kind of an urgency that's been crept in the the american cultural urgency and productivity and success yeah. oriented uh culture has seeped into the church world in which we're um, we've got kind of the pedal to the metal. We're not n we're not navigating as leaders the emotional equity yeah, of our yeah, teams, yeah. their families. Right. We're just going after the big vision as fast as we can, and we and we use the word urgency. Here's where it gets gnarly, and where I where I think we need to do some cleanup as leaders, especially in the prayer movement. When when you start adding Bible verses or yes. eschatological. Um, concepts to fuel an unhealthy urgency yeah. that's where that's where we got to really clean that up yeah because i would say that's borderline manipulation yeah i was going to say that's i think where we we can say that can be manipulative in a sense For where sure. you're trying to rile people up right to get onto the same page to accomplish you, the to vision accomplish, yeah. to do more hours yeah. to to do more programs <laughs> to make really unhealthy life choices yes in light of this the urgency of the hour the because hour, yeah. of this idea which i don't buy into of the imminent yeah. return of jesus or just the proximity to the return of jesus yeah okay that's bad and it gets worse okay <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go down into the valley but i have to say all this up. so that yeah. so that we can we can where's my camera where we can we can feel the triggers, yeah. we can name the triggers, we can get healed from them, so we can give ourselves with a right, good, healthy, and, yeah. and biblical urgency. That's good. So you got this kind of eschatological urgency that creeped into some of the wings of the movement, 
where people were making really unhealthy life choices or 20 year olds just didn't know how to make any life choices yes because of the urgency of the yeah. hour and, and but like, they love the lord and they want to serve they, him and right? so you're co-opting yeah. like zeal and wholeheartedness with this unhealthy urgency yeah. then it gets even gnarlier when you start zooming in from eschatological urgency to national urgency wow okay <laughs> and um I'll try to be careful, but I want to be honest, right? You yeah. can be honest and honoring. There's many times in the last 20 years where there was a exaggerated urgency on the next gathering, the next yes. prayer meeting, yes. the next fast. Yeah, that was going to alter history. It was going to change everything yes. if we did yeah. it. Um, and I believe in the yes. power of prayer and fasting. But it wasn't with an apostolic urgency. Yeah. Um, which has to do with the discipleship of nations. It was with a kind of a, it was a domin neo-dominionistic national urgency that if we do all this, then everything's going to change the next day. Yes. And that guy's going to win the election yes. or that guy's going to get out of power and yeah. that thing. And um, it just did that urgency is not, doesn't produce sustainability and longevity okay. and health mm -hmm. um, in the people under those, um, in, in those environments. It's got an expiration date yeah. because we as humans are limited. We have limited emotional, yeah. limited physical, limited relational, limited spiritual, limited financial. Right. Um, am I missing one? The five ones? Did I name five? I think I missed yeah. one. Physical, emotional, relational. Emotional. Spiritual. spiritual. Yeah. We're, we're limited there, you know? And so when you, when you, when you stir everybody up to this moment is going to be the end all to be all. Yes. They spend all of their equity. Energy. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, many times, actually every time, the thing yeah. that was promised didn't happen Yes, right away or even in proximity to it. Again, I believe in the power of prayer and fasting. But it was an exaggerated urgency. And then people didn't have any gas to to yeah. move on in their lives, you know? And uh, anyways, so when we yeah. say the time is urgent, that's not what we mean. Okay. We, I am not interested in whipping people up into a frenzied busyness where they make unhealthy life choices and they throw, they spend all of their equity and I named the five areas, right. which we can come back to yeah. because that might be a new idea for some listeners that we have five areas yeah. that we focus on but when you do that um healthy things don't grow under your shade of influence if yeah. you keep doing that and so that's not what we're talking about maps global when we say the time is, is urgent okay. it, in fact like you can't make that a why if that's your definition of urgency because we anchor to things that are eternal and yes, are not going to change mm -hmm. yeah are consistent right and that urgency goes up and down right. and the next thing is the most important thing yeah. and all that stuff. And and so we got to, I did the three circles here in, you know, uh, American culture, church culture, and then in our movement of prayer and fasting and worship, we've got to address where we've used the word urgency or we've tried to, to create urgency okay. that, um, that didn't help people move forward in their lives in a healthy way and didn't give them a path to run on for yeah. decades. Um, they spent all their equity and then they landed in a, a worse place afterwards. Yeah. And unfortunately, the, that's the story for my, not all, but it's a story a for many mm -hmm. that otherwise, in my opinion, would still be running to this day. And it was not the only issue. There's a lot of issues. Yeah. But one of the issues was this exaggerated urgency or this temporal urgency yes. we put on um, people in our world and in, in, in ministry culture. So I intentionally, we, our yeah. leadership intentionally made our third wide, the time is urgent, yeah. so we could confront that okay, and then redefine and recover what I believe is an apostolic urgency. Okay. So does that help? It helps because you, do you just, resonate with any of that. Hundred <laughs> percent. I think the. I don't want to spend the whole time of the podcast talking about the bad urgency, but we have to say yes. those things, right? I think it's. I think it's good. Also, I. I think sometimes when 
it's frenzied, right? You can also promote and uh, you can promote impetuous behavior a lot of times, especially with young people, especially with young people okay. who love the Lord. So yes. in is this the right time for me to be in this? Is this, yes, we can see the, the importance of, you know, if we talk about prayer, we've been talking about prayer. So there's going to be this big prayer meeting and we all need to put our finances into it and we're going to go. And if I don't go or we'll put in if all I of the money, that if I miss it, right. then I'm going to miss out on this big thing that the Lord God's is doing. doing yeah. And I don't want to miss out on what God is doing. And so my obedience is then not based off of, what I believe the Lord's leadership, not mm-hmm. only over my life, it's based off of FOMO, FOMO. <laughs> you know? And so and I, that's just a bad discipler. It's, it's, it's been so harmful. It's been so harmful because when those things don't happen, you then look to the people who I want to say, you look at to the people that you looked up to and to the leaders who were telling you that this is what's going to happen. And it shakes the very foundation for sure. The very foundation that you were building your, I want to say like your ministry or like your service to the Lord mm-hmm. on. And so I agree with that. I think it's good for us to redefine that and it's yes. good. And I have appreciated being in a community where we, we value pace. Yes. And we value. Because the time is urgent. Because the time is urgent. I can't yeah. afford to burn out. Yes. In two months because the time is urgent. Yes. And, and That sounds so contradictory, but that's what we mean when we start talking about redefining urgency. Yes. And I see that in leadership too. So it's not just, oh, you do what's best for you, but it's, hey, I don't, we don't want you to burn out. We want you to have longevity. So we are going to make sure that you are receiving the rest that you need. For sure. That you don't reach the end of your limitations. No. That before you get there, yes. you actually are rejuvenated and you are restored so that you can keep running the race. Because the time because is urgent. Because the time is urgent. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, well, maybe then, you know, let's do that. Can you define... What we mean. What we mean. Yes. So I'll give you our definition of urgency, what we mean when we say the time is urgent. And then, um, and then we'll spend some time in this podcast talking about what we live in light of that, yes. it, that informs that urgency. This kind of, that's kind of where I want to land. And then, and then we can talk about some application at the end. So when we say the time is urgent, we mean, we don't mean frenzied busyness activity, yeah. do as much as you can, as fast as possible. We mean we want to live in a way where we prioritize we spend our emotional energy, physical, financial, relational, and spiritual energy towards things that will truly matter yeah. forever. Yeah. And and so the urgency that we live with is is both personal, but it and it's also um, missional. It's personal because I don't want to. I urgently don't want to waste my life on things that won't matter. Yeah, it's good. Right? I want to live on purpose. Yeah. I want to live with intentionality. Yeah. I don't want the tyranny of my ta- my um, task list. What's what's the word? Ta- list? My do to-do, to-do list. list. Thank to-do you. List. I don't want the, the tyranny of my to-do list to rule my life. Yeah. I want to have... And, we'll, you know, what Paul is talking about here, I want to have a sense of intentionality and purpose over how I spend my time, yeah. my money, my energy, my, yes. my relationships, my body, um, so that I can run in a way that matters. Yeah. And the presupposition there is that my life and my life choices and what I do with my heart, my heart, my words, my heart, my mouth, and my hands, yeah. right? My my um, yeah. worship words and and actions works. The presupposition is they actually, no matter how small or big, they actually have significance yeah. forever. That's <laughs> that might be news to yeah. some people that your what you do in in terms of love and obedience to Jesus yeah. and service to others will actually matter in a billion yeah, years. It's not temporal at all. No, it won't. Yeah, yeah. And this is not a tertiary theme in the New Testament. This is a 
primary yeah. theme. In fact, all of the apostles used the idea of eternal rewards yes. and our life, life choices being rewarded in the yeah. age to come. They used, every one of the apostles used it to spur us on to good works. Yeah. And even Jesus, Jesus himself. Jesus, the Sermon on the Mount did. Je- yeah. yeah, Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. Treasure, don't store up treasure on earth, store up treasure yes. in heaven. There's there's real wealth yeah. that we can build yeah. in the age to come. And it has to do with our worship, our words, and our works. And so the urgency that I want to, that we want to build and disciple into people um, at Maps Global is to live in a way for the next 50 years and 20 years or 70 years in a way that you won't regret. Yeah. And that's even an I that's even a new concept to people that there could be regret actually experienced at the judgment seat. Oh. And so the best way um that I think to describe the urgency that we're talking about is in in 1 Corinthians 9. Mm-hmm. And it Paul talks about he compares our lives to running a marathon yeah. or a race, right? Yes. And I think that's the that's the best, like, well, I mean, obviously it's Paul, but and it's inspired scripture, but I think that really helps because it talks about the reward at the end, therefore the way I live today yes. helps me run in a way that I get their prize at the end. Right. Let's look at it together. Okay. First Corinthians 9, verse 24. <coughs> Paul says, do you not know, move the shadow, there it is. <laughs> do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? He's talking about the Olympics. Right. All right, Paul lives in the Greco-Roman world. The Olympics were going on. Going on. There was races that runners ran. Mm-hmm. And he says that um, there's a race, all the runners run, but... Only one gets the prize. Only one runs well enough to receive the reward. Yes. And then he says this. So you, Corinthians, you believers run. That's life. That's your life track. Run in a way that you would obtain the prize, the the reward. Mm -hmm. And we go, how do we do that? He says, well, look at the. Look at the Olympic runners or look, let's take it in today's, you know, today's context. Look at professional athletes. Yes. Right. They exercise self-control in all things. Yeah. They do it to receive a perishable wreath or you can put a Super Bowl trophy. Yeah. Or a a gold medal. Mm -hmm. Some of them do it just for the, the, um, the sense of accomplishment, accomplishment or the fame fame yeah and paul goes they embrace this lifestyle of focused yeah discipline and sacrifice. purposeful yeah. sacrifice intentionality just to get a wreath at the end of the race or just to get a trophy yeah. at the end of that season that it's as perishable. soon as the next season starts is obsolete. Yes, it means nothing next yeah, year. Yeah, <laughs> next year you got to do it all yeah. over again. Yeah. And the the amount of t- how these athletes spend their time yeah. is actually a lesson for the believer. Because Paul says they do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable one. Yeah. Or an eternal one yes. or an everlasting one. They get one medal of mm-hmm. gold that's worth... <laughs> No, Not that no, much money, you know, no. but it's it's also the accomplishment. They take it home, and that's that's what they got for yeah. all. Of, I mean, think about the amount of hours. And this touches every area of your life. Yeah, right. An Olympic runner or Olympic gymnast or Olympic um, swimmer. Do you know how meticulous they are about what they put in their body? Yeah. Right. Yes, they don't eat just anything. No, no? of yeah. course not. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I mean, even like I'm a golfer, I play golf, right? I follow golf and you, you would think, oh, golf, that's not even that strenuous. And yet these guys are so hyper aware of what they're putting in their body yeah. and what, what they can, what, how they can change their diets and, and how they can work out and, and improve certain muscle, yeah. uh, you know, clusters that are going to help them. With like the it's swing. so mm-hmm. disciplined. And Paul goes, if they can do that for, uh, a trophy, that's that, m- is going to mean something momentarily. He says, how then are we to live 
in light of the fact that we have the potential to receive reward that yeah. will last forever. Well. So, verse 26. So, I don't run aimlessly. So good. You can put the word uh, um, unintentionally. Mm-hmm. You could put the word in, you know, without pur- purposelessly, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? Paul goes, I don't, I'm not running my race, just kind of taking it day to day, whatever comes. He goes, no, I don't box as one that's beating the air. Mm-hmm. That's really important. Wow. I don't know if anybody's ever Shadow explained boxing. why, why, why do you not want to, if you're preparing for a fight, Yeah. right? And you see them warming up, Yeah. but why do you not want to spend all your time punching the air? <laughs> Because it's going to feel different when you're actually punching a human being. I don't know. No. Okay. Close. <laughs> that was great. Let's, can we just, that's a great guess. Yay. There's a thing called yeah. punching yourself out. Have oh, you heard wow. of this? No. And it's if you spend all your time throwing your punches into the air, you'll actually wear yourself out and you won't have strength for the actual fight. Wow. Wow. wow, wow. It's called punching, punching yourself out. This is why boxers, you think, you know, they just need bulky muscles. Yes. Actually, they're they're some of the most high endurance athletes because the amount of uh, cardio and energy it takes to throw punches yeah. is so intensive. That's why they're jump roping all yes. the time because to throw punches. And he goes, Paul goes, I don't, I don't spend just energy punching yeah. air, just doing nothing, yeah. so that I have energy when it's time what's to important. fight. Yeah, it's yeah. time to fight. Yeah. I don't spend time beating the air. Yeah. And running aimlessly. And then he says this verse 27, and this is what we mean by the time is urgent. But I discipline. Mm. Again, if that word scares you, just put I'm intentional. Yeah. I'm purposeful. I'm aware. Yeah. Any of those words will work. I discipline my body, that's physical body, and I keep it under control. Or you can put I've got a I've got a handle on how I'm spending my energy. Yeah. So after, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Well, that's so, so intense. That's so powerful. I, I was reading that and I thought to myself, whoa. Yes. That's I can, the apostle. I can, <laughs> that's the apostolic mm-hmm. um, sense of urgency that mm-hmm. we're talking about, which yeah. is I could preach the gospel, lives could be changed, yet I could be disqualified. Yes. Yeah. Or suffer loss. We'll get to it. Suffer loss because heaven's metrics for success are yeah. different than ours. You know, we measure it by how big ministries grow, how many followers, you know, it yeah. attracts, how much impact it makes, how much money it is. We measure our own value by the size of our paychecks, wow. by the things we possess. And heaven doesn't count any of that in wow. its metrics for the the success and value of our lives. Well, wow. it's how big our heart is in love, how we use our words yeah. to build others up, and how we use our works to serve. Well, wow. that's how heaven will get to it. That's how heaven measures success. And so Paul goes, I can preach the best sermons, gather a crowd, everybody's lit up. Yeah, I'm famous throughout Asia Minor, and at the end, it was all a waste because my worship, my words, and my works uh, failed the test. Well, you know, they were worth nothing at the judgment seat. So urgency is informed by what's important. Yeah. And what we're saying when we say the time is urgent is we're placing priority on what we believe is eternally important. Yeah. Which is why I can miss the big prayer meeting if the Lord's telling me to stay home and spend time with my kids. Yes. Because there'll be another prayer meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're in this for the long haul. Yes. Because my kids, me serving and loving and discipling my kids is just as important as the right. big prayer meeting. Yeah. Because the time is urgent. Yeah. It would be worth. It would be. It would be a loss at the end if I got to every one of the prayer meetings, but my kids yeah. weren't fathered and discipled in the faith. That would be regretful. Well. Right. And we need a. We need that value shift. You know. Um, or. Or I'll take it even a little deeper for us. It would be a waste if I made it, you know, if I did the big event or the big yeah. gathering and then burn out 
and then needed three years to recover in my soul. Yes. Right. And I got to the end and I did two or three big things, but in between I was just burnt out. The Lord would go, it's a waste. You yeah. wasted years that you could have been fruitful in your worship, your own heart before yeah. me, in your words towards others and in your works. You could have been so fruitful, but you blew it all out on that one big event yeah. that that I didn't even tell you to make that big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'm not saying all big events are bad. I'm just saying it's an obedience issue and urgency is determined by what's really, truly important to us. Yeah. And it, it doesn't take, and again, I don't, I'm not throwing, taking shots here, but it doesn't take a lot to see the damage of leaders who have defined important by numbers and money and success. Yeah. And the collateral damage of that is families and people, their own children, you know, it's their churches many a times. And when they get to the end, the Lord will go, no, it, that was a waste. Wow. You wasted it. And so I don't want to get there. I don't want to get to the end. And the Lord evaluates my worship words and works and goes, there's, there's so much I had in store for you, but yeah. you wasted it because your metrics were wrong. Wow. Um, well, well, help us, help us reprioritize you know how do we reprioritize according to the word of the lord and according to what when we get to you know judgment day what will cause the lord i mean there's many things i'm sure but just like how do we live with intentionality and um how do we redefine for ourselves according to the word what is important how do we reprioritize you know our lives so if we're running with this idea, no pun intended, yeah. <laughs> that our lives are a race. Right. And we want to discipline our lives in a way that we run well and receive a prize. Yes. Um, and we only get one race. We only That's go super one, important. Yeah. Like the urgency that I'm living with is I don't get yesterday back. <sighs> yeah. I don't get today back. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean I need to do more. It needs, I need to be faithful with what's in front yes. of me, which includes my body and rest. Yeah. But, and so if this idea, if we're running a race, then, then the, the next question is, well, where's the end? Right. Where do we get the prize if there's a prize? And, um, and, uh, and the Bible, the new Testament talks about this appointment, yes. right? This appointment that we all have. And it's the great equalizer yeah. because the poor and the rich will stand to have their yes. same appointment, right? The famous and the, and the unknown will yeah. have the same appointment. Yes. The, the powerful and the, and the poor, you know, yeah. the, the marginalized will have the same appointment. Yeah. It's the great equalizer. And it's this appointment where each of us alone, mm -hmm. alone, I won't have your appointment. You won't have my appointment. Yes. Each of us alone will stand before what the Bible calls the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. The one who laid his life down for us. Yeah. Took us into himself, embraced, you know, gave everything he had to bring everything we are into. Yeah. He, there's an appointment I have with that man. And at that appointment, at the judgment seat, he's going to evaluate how I ran the race. Yes. And based on how I ran my race, he's either going to reward me or I'm going to suffer loss or the regret yeah. of wasting, or you can say misstewarding, squandering mm. the time, energy, breath, affections, wealth, resources that yeah. he gave to yeah. me yeah. for his glory that I wasted it. I did nothing yeah. with it. And, and, and there's a few different parables on this parable of the talents, yes. the parable of the minus. The one who was rebuked by the Lord was the one that did nothing with, yes, what, with was what given. Was given. Right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't the one that had a lot that, you know, used it and got more. Yes. He didn't get rebuked. He got rewarded. And so there's this, there's this, it's not an idea. There's a reality that every one of us are yeah. going to stand before the man, yeah, the resurrected King of glory. Yeah. We're going to stand before him. And Paul says in Romans 14, we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. And each of us will give an account of himself to God. To God. 
Yeah. God will say, what did you do with what I gave you? Well, Don't think bank account, think breath. Well, right? Think time. Mm-hmm. He's going to say, what did you do with the 83 years I gave you? Yeah. Or if you, you know, if you were born again when you were 15 years old, what did you do with those 70 years that I gave you? Well, and there's going to be an accounting for uh-huh. it. There's actually books that are written in heaven about your life. Wow. Now, we all feel a little like, oh my goodness, Tense, right? yeah. But here... That's, that's hope. Glorious. <laughs> yeah. That it's is hope. Glor- yeah. It means heaven and the everlasting uncreated God is actually paying attention yeah. to what I do today. What kind of dignity? Yeah. You know, he's not just some cosmic clockmaker that set everything in motion and chance yeah. is running my life. Why? Right? No, probability is not running my life. Yeah. Obedience and so- to his and sovereign call over my, that's what's yes. running my life. And I'm going to give an account for that. Paul says again in 2 Corinthians 5, whether we're at home or away, he's talking about in the body here or whether we, um, our bodies fall asleep when we go before the yeah. Lord. He says, we make it our aim to please him for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due for what he has done. done. Mm-hmm. Not what he intended to do, not what he dreamt about doing. Yeah. What he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Yeah. No, this is an important point because some people, when they start looking at this, they go, no, no, no. Like this, this can't happen because uh, Jesus took all the judgment for us. Yeah, a There's good no, God would. Yeah, he yeah. never. This is not punishment. This is not punishment. Yeah. This is evaluation. We're not saved by what we do in the body. Right. We're not justified by works. Yeah. Right. We're saved by grace through faith. Yeah. One work that one man did, Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, the Lord of glory, he did a work called the finished work of the cross. And I believed in that work and I was joined to that work and I was saved only by his work. Yes. No merit of my own. Yeah. Right. Justified before God based on his work and Mm -hmm. not mine. Okay. So settle that, settle that. But that doesn't mean that our works mean nothing. Yes. And in some wings of the charismatic movement, works is like a bad word. Yes. Right. It's like, don't, don't say the W word. Yes. Yes, Of course it's all grace. grace. Of course it It is. is. He purchased me. He filled me with the spirit. He joined me to himself and I'm abiding in the vine. I can't bear any fruit apart from that. But then what happens is we are judged based on what we do yes. with what we were given. Yeah. So we're justified by grace, but we're judged by our works, yes. what we've done in the body. And we need to get clarity on that. Yeah. Right. And Paul, again, saw the judgment seat as a place of rewards. I ran my race and I, ran, I disciplined it. I took control of my time, my energy, my resources, my body, my rest schedule, mm-hmm. my relationships. I, I was intentional. I was purposeful with it so that when I give an account for my life, the Lord Jesus, according to his metrics, goes, that was, I love that part. Yeah. And just trust me, the things that he's going to point out that he loved are going to be things that seem so ign- insignificant, insignificant to you. Yeah. He's not going to go, oh. Wow, you had how many followers on Instagram? Yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Bring out the uh, the silver medal for Instagram. No, no, he's yeah. gonna go. Oh, when they when that person slandered you on on yeah. Instagram and you didn't retaliate, instead you blessed. Yeah. He goes, oh, I love that. Hey, put 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 some glory on that. Yes. That's gonna be good. Yeah. Hey, and and so we're judged justified by faith, but we're judged by works, and our assignments, this might be another new idea for many of you. And this is why I'm so excited about this podcast. Yeah. You've actually got assignments yes. in the age to come. You're not flying away yeah. <laughs> to the ether in a diaper playing a harp. That's a not your eternal you're not yeah. <laughs> that's not your eternal destiny. Yeah. That's news to some people. Yeah. You're not going away to heaven forever. Heaven's coming, coming to down. earth. Mm-hmm. A king, a Jewish king 
is coming in the same way he went. He's coming back to the earth. He's bringing heaven and earth together, and you will have your body. You won't have mine. You won't have Mimi's. You won't have Mm -hmm. Brad Pitt's, unfortunately. (laughs) I I mean, (laughs) mean, (laughs) Mr. Olympia's body. I mean, I I don't know him, so I don't know anything about his character, but my God, he's a good looking guy. Okay, anyways, back to the story. Um, and all Gen Z was like, he's old. Yeah, you know? he and is. <laughs> Anyways, I joke, but you're going to have your body yeah. glorified. Yes. And then based on the our race here, what we did with what we were given, not what we what somebody else did. You're not going to give an account for yes. what somebody else did. What you did with what you were given will translate into what assignments you have yeah. on the earth yes. in the age to come. When the king rules from Jerusalem and restores all things, the cities of the earth, yeah. there needs to be real people in the age to come in this city, yes, rebuilding it after the, the ruins, uh, yeah. for the ruins yeah. of what we've done to the earth yeah. and the ruins of the war yeah. at the end. Cities are going to be rebuilt. Yes, economies have to be rebuilt. Yeah. Right, that'll last for eternity. I think it's education anyway. systems need to be rebuilt. <laughs> Healthcare systems yeah. need to be rebuilt. It doesn't just, he doesn't, he's not a wizard. He's a man fully anointed yeah. with the sevenfold spirit. He's not going to return and wave a wand and everything poof is nice yeah. and better. He, as a man, is going to take a thousand years to restore the earth. And yeah. what we did with this short little race, yeah, right here, the 60, 70 years of strength that I've been given, yeah, will determine what role, what position, what proximity, what I'll be entrusted with in the age to come. And you go, we're anywhere you get that. Jesus yeah, himself said, said it. Yeah. If you're faithful with little you, you've been given much. If you've been given one city in this age, you'll be given 10, ten cities, cities in the age to come. Yeah. So we're running this race, but there is really a finish line. Yeah. It's called the judgment seat. It's not where you, it's not, you're not evaluated um, there based on your faith in Jesus. You made it there because yeah. of your faith in Jesus but we'll be judged or evaluated based on what we did, did in yeah. the body. Yeah. And so the points of evaluation, um, uh, I say, I, I've said it a couple of times, yeah. so we'll just, cause it's, it's important. That's not a place of punishment. Yeah. I just want to say that so clearly, you're not going to stand before the Lord. And he's not going to punish you because he absorbed all the punishment, yeah. but there will be a reality in which we could, and this is why I want to live urgently. Yeah. This is urgent. We could suffer regret. Loss. Mm-hmm. loss. And you go, Randy, where is where is that? Second Corinthians 7, 10. Yeah. First John 2, 28. John says that we wouldn't shrink back in shame when he appears because we, we know that our lives were not we wasted. lived. We're wasted. They yeah. weren't for his glory. Yeah. I'm more terrified terrified in a holy way. I have the fear of the Lord. That's what I'm say. When I'm making decisions about this global family, and, and you can ask Chris, you can ask Luke, we say this often. Yeah. What's on my mind when I'm making decisions that are going to affect 500 people is not how are they going to feel about it or how, I mean, that's on my mind or how are we going to get more? It's what will the Lord say about this yeah. when I stand before him? Yeah. And that gets everything really clear, really quick. That's a good question to ask. Yeah a great question to ask yeah and so yeah. you know w- w- when we're thinking about our lives and our job opportunities come yeah we don't go well i'll just take the one that gives me the most money you go yeah which is the one that that'll allow me to run a race that the lord will go that well yes. done that was that was the right decision yes. and sometimes it'll be the job that doesn't pay as much because it gives you more time to invest in f- your family yeah. your kids or to serve in god's church <laughs> or to serve the poor in your city yeah. you know that's the metric thing we got to switch yeah. around. So points of evaluation, I think I've said enough. I feel even now like a fresh, renewed sense of urgency just yeah. sitting here, right? I feel in, it's, it's so but encouraging. it's clean. Yeah, yeah, it's clean. It's going, yeah. oh, yeah, my life really matters. Yeah. And, and I left work yesterday at 5 o'clock. I usually go to 5.30. I, mean, yeah, you know, sometimes six, six, I left at 5 because yeah. my daughter's birthday was yesterday, right? Yeah. And at one time in another world and another Randy. Yeah. It's not fantasy. It was really me in another ministry context. I would have felt for the sake of impact or decision making or yeah. need or I would have 
stayed i would have fudged another 30 yeah, minutes yeah and she'll be fine right? yeah, yeah yeah this meeting is more important mm -hmm. yeah yeah but i'm sitting here today going i know i won't regret that yeah and the, when i stand before the lord i'll go good job and this might do more for my daughter's relationship with the lord for sure again <laughs> you know it's what's really yes. important here. yes yeah now there are other times i call my wife and go hey there's something happening right now and it's important yeah but those calls are so rare these days. I mean, you know this because you're yeah. in our leadership environment. There's yeah. very rarely where we're like, we're staying now. We're staying till eight o'clock to figure yeah. this out. It is. Um, anyway, so. I love that question though. What, what, what do, will what the, Lord the Lord say about say this? About this like, when I give an account. Yeah. So works are important. Re Revelation 2.23, I'll give each according to your works. Romans 2, 6, he will render each according to his works. works. Matthew 16, and he'll repay each person according to what he has done. So it matters. That's a glorious and encouraging. Unless you don't want to live wholehearted, yeah. then that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. So it spurs us. Yes. It spurs us not to fill my schedule tomorrow, yeah. but to live for what really matters. Yeah. Right? So <clears throat> points of evaluation. Here's where we'll end. I'll say... There's an urgency that we apply to our lives individually and personally, which we've mostly focused on. Yeah. And then there's an urgency in terms of how we build our ministries in, in light of the mission we've been given. Yeah. And I want to touch on that in the end. So yeah. here's the application. Thanks for sticking with us. I hope this has been helpful. Um, I wonder if we can get these notes out. We'll figure it out so yeah. you can read this because I know that's helpful for some people. Okay. When you stand before that... Um, that table of judge. Yeah. There's only one judge. One lawgiver yeah. and judge, James says. <clears throat> There's not a panel of judges. It's just him. It's just... The man Jesus Christ. And yeah. he is truth. Yeah. Which means you're not going to be able to sway him with your personality. Well. Okay. Or your giftedness. Yeah. Or your um, charisma. You know? Yeah. He's truth. Which means when you step into the room with him, all truth is revealed. Wow. Motivations, intentions. Yeah. You know. And here's when I look at the scriptures, here's what I see the points of evaluation when we're giving an account for our lives. Here's the points of evaluation I see. Number one is love, our love, first and second commandment, yeah. love for God, which is not arbitrary. It's mind, heart, soul, and strength. Yeah. It's what we do with our internal life. That's going to be open. Yes. Right? Your thought life. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Is going to be <laughs> yes. open before the Lord. Yeah. And here's the glorious thing. It's open to the Lord now. It's I open think to the sometimes Lord now. I forget that. No, it's broadcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and here's the glorious thing. The things we took hold of and repented of and put under the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. are blotted out. Wow. The things we had confidence not to repent of is the things we will give an account for. Wow. That's scary. It could be glorious though. Yeah. I don't need to repent of thinking that I, I'm so proud of my son. Right. Or I love to I love to go out on a golf course and just look at the sky and think about God's beauty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need to repent of that. Yeah. But it's it's the things in between, you know? Yes. So our, I, I would categorize that in worship. We'll be evaluated for our worship. How big were our hearts in love for yeah. God and love for people? And he won't be he won't be measuring how many how loud we clapped in the service yes. and how many dances. I mean, that's all good. I want to clap as a biblical, but he's not going to measure our religious performance. He's going to measure the depth of our love. Wow. That's what's truly, truly um, valuable yeah. about us is how much we loved. And then that overflows in the second commandment, mm -hmm. how much we, that love overflowed into work yeah. service for people. Yeah. What we did in obedience this is why obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. You ever read that verse? Yes. Right? Yeah. You can give yourself so sacrificially. You can, oh, you can be a martyr. Paul says you can give your body on the, on the fire to mm -hmm. be burned. You can give every way. But if it wasn't out of love and service for people, yeah. it's worth nothing. Yes. There'll be no reward for it at the judgment yeah. seat. Obedience to what the Lord is asking you to do. Exactly. <laughs> is that what I asked you to do though? Yeah. You go, Lord, <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. I mobilized yeah. the whole you know, yeah. stay for it. And he goes, but I didn't ask you to do that. Yeah. Well, I was such a generous sender. Uh, exactly. But I asked you to go. Yeah. Like, or, or yeah. I gave away all my money. He goes, yeah, 
But your kids felt neglected. Yeah. That part. Obedience is yeah. better than That's religious that, yeah. sacrifice. Yeah. When you stand before the Lord at the judgment seat, he's going to evaluate your obedience, yeah. not your performance. It's good. You know, Lord, I fasted for 40 days. Yeah, but you were harsh towards people. Yeah. During that fast. It was, it, well, you isolated yourself you isolated from community. Yourself. and Again, yeah, I, yeah. I believe in prayer and fasting, but okay, obedience is better than sacrifice. It's good. What we did in service to other people works. So worship will be evaluated. Works will be evaluated in our words. words. And Jesus himself said this in Matthew 12. He said to the Pharisees, you brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you're evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the, the mouth, mouth speaks, speaks. right? Uh, the good person out of his good treasure brings forth good. An evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, this is Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. On the day of judgment, that's judgment seat, yeah. when people will give an account. There's an accounting system. Yep. It's recorded for every careless word they speak. Spoken. For by your words you'll be justified or by your words you'll be yeah. condemned. Would and you say even like words withheld? I think that's that's somewhere in between works and words. Yeah. Okay. The lack yeah. Here's the point. <clears throat> the New Testament, obviously, obviously, patently, oh, I'm looking at the camera. This is obvious. <laughs> the New Testament, the apostles and yeah. Jesus took, took this, the, the, um, the weight of our words way more seriously yes. than we do. Yes. Right. I, I'm, I'm terrified for a generation that reads that and doesn't put what they write on social media in that. Yeah verse they go oh, i never said that out loud yeah but you typed it yeah that will your your feed those are your words those still. are your words yeah. your twitter feed will you will give an account to yeah. it before jesus yes and well i didn't actually say it out loud won't work it's a thought that was put on it was paper. vocalized <laughs> yeah. yeah every careless word yeah and so that shouldn't cause that should cause a moment of evaluation now Oh, Lord, I want to go back now and I want to repent for mean spirited, demeaning, degrading, or, or just, um, how did Paul say it? Crude, mm. just gross things I said. That weren't, yeah. I want to put that under the blood of Jesus and repent yeah. now so I don't have to try to explain it to Jesus yeah. at the judgment wow. seat, right? Every careless word. So worship works and words are yeah. what we're going to give an account for when Jesus evaluates how we ran our race. Wow. Well. And, uh, and so here's the urgency. This is where we're ending. And, uh, and I'll end it with the urgency in our mission. So as an individual, yeah. I want to urgently look at, do I, am I living with intentionality mm -hmm. or purposefully? Paul said, uh, discipline and under control. You can put purposeful, intentional with how I spend my time. Time. Mm -hmm. time. That's that's the currency we're dealing with here. Yeah. And you, that's what Paul talks about in Ephesians 5. Actually, go yeah. ahead and read that verse in Ephesians 5. No? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Ephesians 5, verse 15. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the devil, because the, the days, days are, are evil. evil. <laughs> devil is evil too. Because, <laughs> to hell because with the, the devil. Because the days are evil. <laughs> Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So Paul goes, look at how you're spending your time. Understand what God is yeah. asking you to do and reconcile that calendar. Yes. Don't spend time, um, waste time on things that God's not asking you to do yeah. or are not beneficial or not bearing fruit or just squander. Yeah. Just don't do it. Exercise control. If the athletes don't waste time, yeah. they look at their diet, they look at their schedule, they look at their training, they look yeah. at, they say no to going out and just partying, yes. you know, that because they're in training season. Right. It's not... It, then how should we look at our time? Yeah. And so I break down kind of, we break this down and I think this is a good place to end is. It's great. Okay. So I want to live with urgency, which means a priority on what really matters. Mm -hmm. So I want to look at how I'm spending my life. I've got a life. I got one shot, 80 plus years. I don't want to stand before the Lord and go, man, I, 
I'll say it this way. You're not going to stand before the Lord at the judgment seat and go, I wish I was just less generous. Yeah, 100%. Right. 100%. I wish I would have just loved a little less. Yeah. I loved way too much, didn't I, yeah. Jesus? <laughs> yeah. You're going to be standing before love himself. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not going to say, Lord, I wish I would have just, um, you know, not encouraged people as much. Yes. Yeah. You're not yeah, going to yeah. say that. That's. Yeah. You're going to go, oh, I had so yeah, much. I blessed too much. I, you're not going to say that. I should have just withheld. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here's the f here's the five ways that we live with urgency. Yes. Number one, what am I doing? How am I uh, living on purpose and intentionality with my physical health? Yes. And there's there's a, so many different factors in that because everybody's body is different. Mm -hmm. Some people have uh, issues in the body they can't control. Yeah. They can't. They can't. Um, you know, diet out of that sure, thing or, yeah. you know, but it's what you have with what you're given, the body you've been given. Are you taking care of it to the best, uh, to the best of your ability so that your physical health doesn't end up um, being a Inches. hurdle mm -hmm. or an impedance yeah. in you running your race? Yeah, it's good. Right. And so, and I, and we've seen this a lot, like, and people get into these crazy schedules and they're in even in ministry and then their their diet their food their when they eat gets breakdown. up and they don't mm -hmm. sleep and there's an expiration date on yeah. that they could have they could have run for 30 years in fruitfulness but their body gave out 5 yeah. years in because they didn't take care of it yeah. you know so your physical health how how are you living with purpose and intentionality and focus with your physical health with your relationships mm -hmm. and this this might be a <laughs> news to people there's some people that you need don't need to spend that much time with because they're not helping you to bear fruit. Yes. They're actually helping you waste time. Yeah. Doesn't mean you hate them and you say, I can never hang out with you. It's just you want to invest in relationships yeah. that God has put in your life that spur you on yes. to good works. Um, and includes your if you're if you or live with your nuclear family yeah. or if you have your wife and your kids. I did a podcast. I think Caitlin and I did a podcast yeah. on marriage and ministry. Marriage is not more important than ministry. Yeah. Neither yeah. is ministry more important than marriage. That's a false dichotomy. Yeah. It's how do I invest in the relationships God's put in my life? And by proximity, marriage becomes the one that's closest yes. to me. Yeah, yeah. It's not in competition with the ministry. Yeah. You know, if it, when it gets into competition, you've already failed. Yeah. But how do I manage my relationships in a way when I stand before the Lord? He goes, well done. Yeah. You steward that, which for me means I need to take a lot of time away from people so I can give the best when I'm in people because yes. I'm massively introverted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the thing. It's not, okay, just hang out every night with yes, everybody. With people, yeah. It's, did I give the best, the best of parts. me, mm -hmm. the best parts of me to the people yeah. that you put around me? And the Lord will ask me about that and ask me about my kids. Um, third, let's go with financial. What did you do with the finances and yeah. the resources that I gave you? And when you think financial resources, don't just think dollars, think what you have access to. Well, okay. That's a, that's a huge people check out with the finances because they go, well, I don't have that much money. No, but you have access to what 99% of the world doesn't have access yeah. to. How are you using that towards worship works yes. and words? Yeah. Um, emotional health mm -hmm. how are you training yourself emotionally so that when you stand before the lord you don't regret how you let your emotion just fly out of control and you never learned to be self-aware and you never yes. learned how to interact with people and so you were just your emotions were always in the driver's yeah. seat and you end up wasting time or relationships because you were emotionally unhealthy yeah. right yeah and emotional health is a huge yes, big deal plus. for us. Mm -hmm. It's a I don't I'm trying to not do podcasts all yeah. the time. <laughs> and then the and then the fifth, which is the most obvious, is spiritual. Spiritual, mm -hmm. spiritual health. You, John Owen says, and I think we quoted in the Jesus is Worthy yeah. podcast, but you're not gonna when you stand before the Lord at the judgment yeah. seat, if you didn't love him and desire him now, it's not gonna change yes. then, right? You've got to invest in the most intimate relationship with his yeah. your relationship with Jesus in your spiritual life. Do you have a Bible? Do you know where you're at in your Bible right now? Everybody goes, yeah. flag. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Somebody, because I don't want yeah. you to waste time. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because when we don't have a plan, we just kind of go, oh, wonder yeah. what's on Instagram. It's like, yes, exactly. You know, when you have a plan, you can deviate from it. Doesn't, you're not going to break a rule, but 
know where you're at. I know mm-hmm. where I'm at in the Bible right yeah. now in this season. Sometimes this morning I didn't even touch it, but I yeah. know where I'm at, you yeah. know? So do you have, you know where you're in the Bible? Do you know what you're praying through right yeah. now? Do you know um, what's, where are you at? This is what I, when I ask people, when I'm trying to gauge spiritual health, this is the one question. Hey, what's the Lord saying to you right mm-hmm. now? And if they go, oh, uh, I go, then they're not in conversation. Yes. Because God's, I mean, there's seasons of silence, but even in silence, there's whispers. Yes. Um, so, so here I'm calling you guys to think deeply about these areas of your That's life good. and how you're running your race in a way, urgently today, in a way that will matter forever. Yeah. That when you stand before the judgment seat, you have confidence yeah. that you steward it to the best of your ability what you were given yeah physically emotionally relationally spiritually emotionally and so and so to wrap this all up we did it we did yeah and is don't i'm pleading with you i urgently don't want you to waste your life yeah your life is so precious there's so much dignity yeah in what you do tomorrow and the next week and the next season of your life i don't want you wasting it just kind of wandering Living around doing nothing yeah. no purpose no intentionality yeah. not knowing it would be a waste for me as as a shepherd if, yeah. if you didn't know what assignment you were currently yes. stewarding right now i go just and the assignment might be to wait yeah but you gotta you know get clarity on yeah. this and live on purpose yeah live in light of that great appointment that's yeah. coming and that's the urgency that's the apostolic urgency that I believe the apostles lived with. That's what fueled them, whether the, whether Paul says, I'm going to go preach the gospel, yes. you know, where, where it hasn't been named, or whether, you know, John stays in Ephesus yeah. and shepherds and teaches Timothy, yes. you know, and over, like it's, it's obedience to the assignment. And so there's obviously an urgency for the gospel to touch the ends of the earth, but that starts with an individual urgency. Yeah. I would feel like we would do people a disservice. We would start kind of shifting back into yeah. that unhealthy urgency. Yeah. If we were like, we just got to go. We got to get the gospel. Leaders. Yeah. No, doesn't matter how it's your life choices. Just yes. go, go, go. It's not going to help because you're going to trip up on, yes. on your unhealthy habits and yeah. unhealthy lifestyle. If I just get you to Tajikistan, you know? Yeah. And so I'd rather you take personal responsibility for your life and say, I'm going to live like the athletes who run, compete for medals, trophies. I'm going to live my life in these areas on purpose with intentionality to give my best to whatever assignment. And if people take personal responsibility, the Lord of the harvest does a good job at picking who he's so going to send yes. and who he's, who's going to stay. Yeah. And we're all in this together. Yeah, That's so good. And so we want to encourage you to take what we've spoken about today and ask the Lord to help you prioritize and set things in the right place and allow him to anchor um, the way that in which you are spending your time and living with intentionality and purpose. We hope that this has been helpful and we will see you see next you time. Next that's it. Time? The gospel, uh, Jesus is worthy. <laughs> gospel is Yeah, powerful. that's it about our wise. Time is urgent. Yeah, we did it. I hope wise. you enjoyed those three podcasts. Yeah. And we will see you because we're on the tube now. Yes, that, that's why I was like, just hesitate when we see you will you will see us see ya (laughs) we hope you enjoyed this episode of the maps global podcast make sure to subscribe to this channel and check out previous episodes have you seen our 50 hours documentary watch it now and don't forget to sign up for our email newsletters